Hello, my name is Jerry Radka and I'm a course developer in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. In this learning bite, we'll take a look at the process of upgrading or downgrading the firmware on an AX411 access point. And if you're using an AX411 access point in your network, uh, you might find you occasionally need to upgrade the uh, firmware on one or all of the access points. This could be for bug fixes, new features, etc. Uh, I recommend reading the release notes for the firmware so you know what the firmware update is addressing, and then you can determine which version meets your needs. Uh, the first thing you will want to do is verify the current firmware version of the access point. And this is performed using the command that I'm showing on the screen. Uh, from operational mode, it would be show WLAN access points, the name that you gave uh, that particular access point, followed by uh, detail. And in a moment, we'll step out of this presentation and I'll show you how to perform all these uh, steps that we're going to be discussing here. And as you probably know, a branch SRX series device is managed, uh, is used to manage an AX411 access point. So in this learning bite, we're going to take a look at an AX411 access point that I have up and running on an SRX210. And then on a, on a side note, getting back to the uh, access point name, to uh, set or change the name of an access point, you can use the command at the bottom of this slide, which is uh, set WLAN access point and then the name that you want to give that access point, and then MAC address, and then the uh, MAC address of the access point, which can be found on a sticker on the bottom of the access point. And that MAC address is just uh, 12 characters. There's no colons uh, between the characters like you see uh, listed sometimes with a MAC address. OK, so here are the, the steps. Uh, you go to the Juniper website, read the release notes, uh, download the firmware version you want. And then you'll need to copy the uh, firmware version to the SRX, which is controlling the uh, AX411 that you want to upgrade. And there are a few ways to do this, uh, copying it to an FTP, FTP server, for example. Uh, but I'll show you how to copy it from a USB flash drive in this learning byte. And I'm showing the address to the uh, Juniper site where you can download the uh, firmware version and also check out the release notes. OK, so we'll copy the file from a USB flash drive and we'll have to uh, mount the drive to the SRX so that the SRX recognizes that drive. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll run the command using, uh, using that particular uh, file um, to upgrade the uh, AX411 firmware. And actually, you can use this process to upgrade or downgrade the firmware. The process is the same. It's just whatever file, you, uh, file and version you uh, happen to be using. OK, so let's leave the, uh, the presentation. Let's go to the, the CLI for an SRX210 that I have uh, an AX411 connected to. OK, so let's find the current version uh, of the AX411 firmware. And that's going to be done from operational mode. We're going to run the command show WLAN access points and then the name of the access point. And uh, branch SRXs can control anywhere from one to four AX411s. If you just have one AX411, uh, what most people do is they just name it AX411. But if you have more than one, you're going to want to give them different names, uh, whatever makes sense in your network, maybe uh, you know by the area they're in, et cetera. So this particular access point we have named uh, Lobby. And then after that, we want Detail. So let's run that command. And again, what we're looking for here is the current firmware version, which we can see here is 10.1.3.9. And this will also show us uh, other information, such as the MAC address I was talking about, uh, the IP address, the different radios, etc. So now we know that the current version is 10.1.3.9. Uh, uh, and let's say that we've determined through reading the, the release notes that version 10.1. Uh, point 0.3.16 point is the version that we need. Now I've copied that version from the Juniper website onto a USB flash drive already. And next I'll, I will want to copy that file onto the SRX. Uh, first thing we have to do is mount the USB flash drive to the SRX so that it recognizes it. Uh, this we have to do from the shell. So let's exit out to the shell. 
Uh, we will need to know the ID that uh, Junos will associate with the USB device once we plug it in. And to do that, let's first run the uh, ls slash dev command because the slash dev directory is where it's going to show up. So ls slash dev. Okay. And we're going to want to look right around this area here where it starts with, uh, where the file names start with uh, DA. When we plug in the USB, it's going to receive an ID starting with DA. And then it'll have a number. It's usually a 0 or a 1, followed by a S1. So let's plug in the USB. OK, and you can see right away, it looks like it's going to start with, uh, with DA1. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that command again. And you can see the change right here. DA1S1 is the ID that it's assigned to that USB stick that I just plugged in. Okay, so next let's create a mount directory, and we're still going to do this uh, from the shell. So from here we're going to use the command to, uh, to make a directory, mkdir. And we will call it var slash tmp slash usb. Okay, and any directory name can be used as a mounted directory. In this particular example, I'm going to use slash var slash tmp slash usb. Okay, then we'll use the command mount, then a space, minus t, space, msdos, space, and then slash dev slash da1s1 because that's the uh, user uh, device ID or the USB um, device ID that we just established. And then the directory that we want to mount it to, which we created, which is var tmp slash usb. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're using the mount command to attach the file system found on the USB device to the SRX directory uh, hierarchy. And then mount is followed by a minus T, which is used to indicate the file system type, which is MS-DOS. Then we list what we determined to be the, uh, the drive ID for our USB stick, slash dev, slash DA1S1 in our example. Yours might be a little different. And then finally, the directory to which we are mounting the USB, which again in our example is slash VAR slash TMP slash USB. So all this tells the SRX device to attach the file system found on the USB to the directory that we specify. Next, we want to uh, copy the file from the USB to the SRX's uh, internal flash memory. We could do the upgrade from the USB. All the system needs to know is where the file is located but it's better to copy the file to the SRX. If you want to change the image at a later date, it's easier to have them on the SRX instead of having to go through the USB mounting procedure every time. Just be careful with how much uh, space multiple images are going to be using up on your SRX's memory. Okay, so let's use the CP command to copy the file to the directory that we just created. So CP and then slash VAR slash TMP slash USB, and the name of the file that I uh, upgraded uh, or that I uh, loaded from the uh, Juniper site is upgrade underscore 10 underscore 1 3 16 TAR. Okay, and we'll just put it into the root directory. So here we're just telling it to copy the file. To the, uh, to the root directory. Okay, so now that we have the file on the SRX, we can load that firmware image onto the AX411. And this we do from operational mode. So let's get back into there. We want to use the command request WLAN access point firmware upgrade. And then next you can use the command all and then all of the AX411s that are being managed by this SRX would get their firmware upgraded. Or if you want to do um, just a particular AX411, you can use 
the name of that particular AX411, followed by the command file, and then the path to the file name, which we know we put in root, and then the name of the file. Okay, and that will start upgrading the uh, the firmware onto the particular AX411 that I selected in the command, or you could use the all command to do uh, all of the uh, AX411s connected to that SRX at once. And then uh, you'll see a message to let you know that the uh, the upgrade is in, is in progress, even though it goes back to the uh, the command prompt like this, it's still going to take several minutes. So if you're near the access point, uh, you'll know that the process is complete when the LEDs go back to their normal state. If you run the command to view the access point information uh, while the process is still going on, you're going to get a message telling you that uh, the access point is un unavailable during the upgrade. Or if the process has completed, it will show you the new information uh, to, to let you know that the process is complete. So let's go ahead and run the show WLAN access points, and then we want again we want the name of the access point, and then detail to verify that the upgrade has taken place. And as we check the firmware version now, you can see the upgrade has taken place because we've got version 10.1.3.16 installed on this AX411. Okay, and those are the steps for upgrading the firmware on an AX411 access point. Uh, be sure to check out some of the other learning bytes. For example, there is a learning byte titled Branch SRX Series AX411 Access Point Setup and Installation that discusses the initial setup and installation of an AX411 access point. Uh, plus, there are learning bytes available on a broad range of topics from basic to advanced, and we're upgrading them, uh, and I should say we're adding new ones all the time, so be sure to check those out. Uh, thank you for viewing this learning bite, and I hope you found this information helpful. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.